In this video, I show you how to properly beat grade a transition track in Serato DJ. Find out more coming up. Thank you for watching P.TV where you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. Now let's get into the video. Transition tracks are tools that a lot of DJs use to jump from one BPM to another. Usually it's to cover a BPM range that you wouldn't usually be able to get in a song or two. So for this example, we're jumping from 95 BPM to 70. Now if you're using a, you know, kind of blending style of DJing, this could take you anywhere from 5 to 10 songs depending on how fast you're mixing. Now I know it's possible to go from 95 to 70 if you're dropping on the one or you're slamming tracks, but if you are the blending kind of DJ and you like, you know, a more smooth kind of mix style or maybe that's just what, is, what the crowd calls for, these uh, transition tracks are really helpful. Now the problem with these transition tracks in Serato Scratch Live was you were not able to you know, change the BPM. So whatever Serato Scratch Live went ahead and analyzed this BPM as, it would maintain that same BPM through the entire track. So for example, in this track, the first eight bars are 95 BPM, then the next four bars transition from 95 BPM down to 70, and then the rest of the track would be 70 BPM. Now, with Serato Scratch Live, for instance, right now it's just the 70 BPM because this is what the majority of the track is. So even though these uh, first eight bars are 95 BPM, Serato Scratch Live would see this as 70. So you might ask, why is this important? For a couple factors. The number one, I would say, is the fact that if this BPM is wrong and it's not the same as this ending BPM, so for example, if Serato read this as 95 instead of 70, which is the case in some transition tracks, the looping functions would actually be off because Serato's looping functions in Scratch Live went off of this BPM right here. But in Serato DJ, we're actually able to change the BPM as we go along in the track, which was not possible in Serato Scratch Live. So your looping functions will work correctly, your effects will work correctly, and just everything will be kind of smoother because not only will these functions work, but if you're the kind of DJ that uses the, the actual BPM number on the deck to just kind of reference as you're going along, you actually get the correct BPM on the deck as well. So let's go ahead and show you how to beat grid a transition track in Serato DJ uh, correctly. So right now you can see that this BPM is at around 70 BPM, even though this first part is actually 95. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and open beat grid edit mode by clicking on this button right here and we're going to leave the first marker and we're going to either hit this set button right here or hit X on our keyboard so I'm going to go ahead and hit set notice the BPM didn't change because we haven't went ahead and adjusted it so we're going to scroll ahead a little bit see how this is the downbeat right here and it's still off this is this right here marks the beginning of the second bar but it's off so if we give it a listen this is where this this right here is where the two should be. So we can adjust that in three ways. We can use these buttons right here to go ahead and move that slowly, move it quickly, forward or backward. We can actually go ahead and hit and hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard, click right here on the number and move it along. Or my preferred method and what I think is the fastest is to use the X key or the Set button right here as you're going along playing the song to make sure that the beat grid is correct. So let's go ahead and use that method because it's the, the quickest. So I'll go ahead and restart the track. I'm going to go and I'm going to go ahead and play the track and hit X as I go along to set the beat markers. So here we go. Okay, so now I've set a few and the BPM is correct because Serato DJ is adjusted. Still on time. And right here at the beginning of the ninth bar is where the transition happens from 95 to 70. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is set one final beat marker right here to signify the end of the 95 BPM section. And then this next section, actually you can hear the transition. Notice it's not gonna be beat graded correctly because we haven't done that yet. So the BPM won't change, but let's give it a listen. Notice this is kind of all off if you listen to it and where the bars and beats are. See, this is where the, the actual bar should start, but it doesn't because the beat grid hasn't been adjusted and the transition hasn't been accounted for. So let's start at the beginning of the track. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set my usual cue points. So I'm going to go ahead and use beat jump to get to the beginning of the fifth bar and hit it one more time to get the beginning of the ninth bar, just like that. 
Then I'm going to use the same method that I used, using the X key to kind of make sure that I get the beat grids onto the, the downbeat or the beginning of the bar. So let's rewind this a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit play, and then I'm going to hit X on the keyboard to signify the downbeats. Okay, not notice that the BPM is pretty close, but it's still a little off. So we can go ahead and kind of adjust it as we go along. Get this a little closer. Another way to check, notice it's not really, you know, that easy to see right here. On the, the two and the four, that's where the snare should be. This one's kind of close. Go ahead, get a clean downbeat. See, it's off, so I'll go ahead and just hit Alt Option, move that there. Oh, there we go. Now, once we get the BPM pretty much correct and we can see this, these first couple bars are good, what I like to do is go ahead and jump to the end of the track and double check to make sure that these are all on time. So, okay, that's off. Go ahead and move that. It's off again. So, like I said, I'm just holding down. Alt and Option and moving it. And now I know the end of the track is correct. Now what, why it's important to make sure that the end is correct is that if the bars and beats are correct at the end, you you can pretty much be sure that everything in the middle is on, uh, on beat as well. So if we scroll through, notice all the way through the song, everything seems pretty much on beat and we're good to go. And notice that the BPM actually changes. So if again, if we go to the beginning of the transition, it's at 92. See it changing right here and right here to reflect the BPM change. And there we go, now we're about seven. So like I said, this is really important, especially if you're the kind of DJ that uses the loops to you know loop out at the end of a transition track or if you know you use effects like anything that's beat related like the beat slicer or the echo out or the delays or anything like that. All of that depends in Serato DJ. It all depends on the beat grid. So just taking maybe like a minute or two to get through the beat gridding this first part, then beat gridding your transition, and then the last step would be double checking at the end to make sure all the beat grids are on point, and then you should be good to go and your transition tracks are beat gridded correctly. So that's a look at how to properly beat grid a transition track in Serato DJ. So question of the day, do you use transition tracks when you play? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And as always, if you found this video useful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click on subscribe right there. Or if you want to watch more content, go ahead and click on that video right there. And thank you for watching P.TV, where you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. See you next time.